The transport sector um, impacts the environment in a number of ways and across a, a range of different scales. So at the global level, transport is a major contributor of greenhouse gas emissions, and at the local scale, it pollutes the air that we breathe. So my research aim is to understand and better quantify those impacts and develop tools and technologies for us to reduce them. The challenge is that the World Bank predicts that by 2030, passenger traffic could increase by 50%, and freight volumes could increase by 70% globally, and this is only 12 years away. So this growing trend of travel demand increases, urbanization and population growth could lead us with cities that are filled with congestion and smog. So at this point, you might be thinking that electric vehicles are gonna come along and save our cities, but EV sales are about 1% of total sale volumes at the moment, and we need to produce that electricity some way, and, and not all of that electricity is produced from renewable sources. So have you ever thought about the air pollution that you're exposed to as you walk down a street? Standing at a bus stop waiting for a bus, you could be exposed to pollution concentrations that are 100 times higher than you would be exposed to on a quiet street or in the countryside. And it matters who you are. So children are exposed to concentrations that are 10 to 30% higher than adults. And we know that children growing up in polluted areas and going to school in polluted areas end up with smaller lungs and that this has long-term health consequences. But typically we only calculate based on average concentrations and average population densities. So we need more information about where people are, where they're exposed to different levels of pollution in different walks of life, in different occupations, and averages aren't good enough. And so we need better information on how much, where, and when transport emissions occur in cities in order to develop effective solutions. In my group at Imperial, we're doing this in three ways. So firstly, we're developing models of emissions from vehicles that accurately and give us better estimates of the transport sector impacts and ultimately exposure estimates. We're working with connected car technologies to understand where and when emissions occur, and we're also working with companies to develop and implement new technologies. And so engines emit pollutants a range of toxic pollutants that are, affect our health. But not all engines are equal. In a study of 150 vehicles, we found the worst diesel engine to be producing 60 times more nitrogen oxides than the average petrol car. Our existing models don't account for this variation between vehicles, and they don't account properly for congestion. So we're developing using real-world emissions data, machine learning tools that we can incorporate engine data and vehicle data so that estimates of emissions are fast, and can be implemented in real time. We also need to know where these emissions are occurring, and so we're using uh, taxi GPS data to understand flows of traffic across the city, and supplementing that with traffic camera data. Connected car technologies allow us to know where and when vehicles are, and what their emissions are in real time. And so in the future, cities will be able to dynamically manage air pollution by redirecting cars and traffic around pedestrianized areas where the pollution is highest. In the long term, connected and autonomous vehicles may also be part of the solution. Vehicles that communicate with infrastructure and with each other are able to smooth out the stop-start congested conditions. So in our simulations where we've implemented this, we've seen that emissions could be reduced by 20% at the most congested periods through this smoother driving. We're also working with two companies in the UK to implement a, a hybrid truck technology. So this hybrid system regenerates energy during braking and then uses it during acceleration. And in doing so, reduces emissions significantly and can also save the operator significant amounts of fuel costs, so up to 25% in cities. And in the long term, we want to implement an electric vehicle mode where the engine can completely shut off and these vehicles can operate emissions-free in certain areas. So we're at an incredibly exciting time for the transport sector. New technologies offer challenges, but they also offer opportunities. Vehicles can and they must be cleaner, but exposure to pollution is not equal. And so we need to know, we need more information on where, when, 
and how much of these emissions are occurring so that we can develop effective solutions to reduce exposure to pollution in our cities.